So the Euro 5 emission norms are pushing all bike makers to up the cubic capacity on their engines so that they can achieve those new CO2 emissions without really compromising on the power or the performance of the motorcycle. That's the reason or rather one of the reasons why the BMW went to a 1250 GS, the Africa Twin is now 1100, the KTM 790 family will soon get an 890 classification and here the Tigers are now 900. Well, the cubic capacity of the new engine is actually 888cc, triple eight. And I think that would have been a cooler name for the Tiger, a Tiger triple eight, you know, Triumph, triple, triple eight, all of that. But they've decided to go with a 900. They've decided to go with a bigger number. This is not the first time they're using the 900 with a Tiger. They did that in the 90s. And now that name is back with this motorcycle. Now, before we go into the details of it, there are two motorcycles that you can see on my either side. This is the GT, this is the Rally. Now these are the new classifications and we are going to treat both these motorcycles separately because they're literally two different motorcycles in a lot of ways and it's very important as always with the Tiger to know what you want and to know what you need. If you're going to spend most of the saddle time on tarmac, sport touring or even riding to work, the GT Pro is the Tiger that is ideally suited for you. To that effect, it uses cast wheels, 19 front, 17 rear, has an electronically adjustable rear suspension, cruise control, riding modes that alter the response of the engine, the electronic nannies and the rear suspension, and a big dashboard that pairs with your phone for satellite navigation and for even controlling your GoPro. So the bike you see here is the GT Pro. This is the top of the line for the GT line and that is what is coming to India. They're not bringing in the lower GTs, they're not bringing in the base Tiger, they're bringing in the GT Pro within the GT line. And I think because of its lower seat height compared to the Rally, this is what most Indians will prefer and choose over the Rally range. Also, in terms of the design, they look a lot leaner now. You can see both the bikes, they look a lot leaner now and they're also lighter by up to 5 kilos. The new leaner stance is largely attributed to the new Erla Africa Twin headlights which now have single function headlamps for upper and lower beams respectively. The throw is better than the outgoing units but I recommend larger aftermarket auxiliary lights. The beak is also a standard fitment now and has a stronger mounting than before. The rear grab rails are chunkier and less intrusive for the pillion while getting on or off. Most of the weight savings come from the new chassis and the engine and their revised geometries also make a difference to the way the Tiger feels now. The chassis is also narrow at the top, which means that the tank and the seat is now narrow. So even if the seat height figures might seem tall, getting both your feet grounded to the ground is not a problem at all. In fact, it's quite easy, not just on this, but also on the Rally Pro. So if you are looking at buying the new Tiger, definitely go check out what seat options and what seat height and what variant really works for you. But the GT being the lower one is much easier when it comes to getting both your feet nicely up to the ground. Now, in terms of the chassis, it's a new modular chassis. So that's also allowed them to have a multi-material construction. So the main frame is a rigid steel frame, whereas the subframe is now made out of aluminium. It's not only lightweight, but it also means that it is removable so it can be replaced in case of an accident in case of a damage even the foot pegs are removable now this is something that a lot of owners of the current tiger 800 complained about the welds would break the chassis would bend and they would have to replace the entire chassis now because of this model arrangement it's much easier you can choose which part has to be replaced and replace only that one at the front end of the chassis the radiator now has a split design which has allowed a wider and rear seat placement of the two units opening up more room at the front. So that design has also allowed a new arrangement for the fans. So now the fans are sort of outward. You see these new vents. So all of uh, the hot air, the exhaust for this is outward. It's not being drawn onto your knees anymore. However, you are still going to be hugging the frame. So in bumper to bumper traffic, it's still going to cook up. So now the overall thermal efficiency or the thermal management of this new system is a big improvement over the 800. Uh, so in terms of the overall heating of the vehicle, it's going to be uh, much, much lower as compared to what you uh, found in the 800. It would uh, heat up quite easily in traffic jams. This one may not heat up uh, that quickly. But a little concern that I have with this design is the placement of the rectifier. If you notice, it is between the two radiators. So what's happening, especially with the GT, is that it's kicking up a lot of muck, which is now going up and caking up on the heatsink of the rectifier. So on your long distance journeys, you might want to keep taking a look at it every day and wash it if necessary. If not, the rectifier is going to heat up and it's going to be toast. A larger mudguard from the Rally Pro could solve this issue. 
The starter motor is now more robust than before, so I expect better longevity and endurance in the Indian conditions. The exhaust system has now been redesigned to a three-piece unit where the CatCon sits independently. The tank has been redesigned too, and though it now looks smaller than before, it has a larger capacity of 20 litres. Now with the Euro 5 emissions, the claimed fuel economy for the new Tiger 900s is actually reduced. So that means that even with the additional capacity of the tank, the range is not as much as the Tiger 800. Big advantage of having this new tank design is that with the increased volume, they have finally moved the placement of the air filter. It's not right under the tank, so to access it, you don't have to remove the tank anymore. It's right below the seat. It uh, still needs a few tools. Let me take out the seat. Well, this is where the air filter goes. It still needs tools, but it is very accessible now. And that is something that the Tiger community wished for, and it's finally fixed with the 900. All these design changes have allowed a massive change to the rake and the trail of the motorcycle. That has not only altered the wheelbase on both the models, it has also created more room at the front, allowing Triumph to tilt the engine forward and set it slightly lower than before. With the repositioning, it requires a slightly shorter chain now, and the rubbing strip under the chain has been redesigned for lesser noise and better longevity. So the pivot point for tilting the engine is actually where the swing arm meets the engine. So in terms of the geometry at the rear, it's not changed by much. However, you do achieve better mass centralization. Also, Triumph has reduced the size of the oil sump. It requires half a litre lesser oil, so that's again weight savings. And in terms of the engine, well, the sleeves for the cylinder, they are now one unit. So essentially, they are sharing walls between the three sleeves. That's again saved weight. And at the same time, it's allowed more room within the cylinder sleeves to have larger pistons. 4mm larger pistons and that is what has sort of contributed to this additional cubic capacity that this engine now gets. So the advantage of all the jargon that I've spoken about right now essentially combines to make this bike feel less top heavy and that is something that you experience the moment you get astride this bike and that's a very good thing. Other big change to the new engine is the T-plane crankshaft similar to Yamaha's cross-plane technology. So the crank pins on the new crankshaft are placed at 90 degrees from each other and Triumph has also changed the firing order from a 1-2-3 that you had on the 800 to a 1-3-2 that you now get on the 900. So that's created a more uneven firing order and because of that you get this new raspy tone from the exhaust note which really sounds nice compared to the smooth and the whistling tone that you had on the 800 this one sounds really nice. In fact we cranked up both the bikes next to each other last night so take a listen on what the difference is like. I think the new engine sounds brilliant, but we are going to have varied opinions on that. People are going to be polarized. People who already have the Tiger or love that whistling triple sound of the Tiger or any of the Triumph motorcycles are probably not going to like this new raspy, grunty tone that this new 900 has. Like I said, it's going to be a polarized opinion. I quite like it. But now it's more important to find out what this engine is all about when it comes to performance, because sound is just a byproduct. This new crank has been engineered to give you literally the performance of two different engines in one so at the low end you have the performance of a parallel twin motor and at the top end you get that rev happy fast nature that we've always loved with the tiger 800 now does it really do that that's something that we need to find out now and the only way of doing that is gearing up and hitting the road now before we continue a quick disclaimer with very little video support available from Triumph, we will have to resort to a bit of the B-roll footage and plenty of GoPro footage. So kindly bear with us. If the previous Tiger has intimidated you with its bulk, the new one probably won't do it as much. It feels light on its feet from the get-go without losing its big bike feel. The increased cubic capacity of the engine has bumped up the torque output to 87 Newton meters, and it is now available earlier in the rev range, but the power output still remains the same. So when the specs came out, all of us got excited that yes, the cubic capacity has gone up, the torque has gone up, but the power figure, it's still at 95 PS. Why couldn't they give us that magical 100 PS plus figure, right? A lot of you complained about it. We spoke to them about it. Now you will have to blame the A2 licensing for this. Now that's not a thing in India. We probably don't even know what the A2 license stands for. It is a starter license is what I'm told. Now that is the reason why this bike doesn't have a 100 PS figure. Why it is stuck at 95 PS, let's put it that way. Because Triumph is offering a kit that 
essentially halves the power output for the A2. So it's not the power output, but it's restricting the amount of power that is being fed to the rear wheel, is what we are told. I don't know exactly how this system works, but we are told that even if it was one PS more than 95, they wouldn't have been able to achieve that figure that is required for the A2 license. And that is the reason why the power is what it is. That's also the reason that if you were to upgrade to the new Arrow exhaust on this, it will still not have any change to the power output. It will only change the sound, of course, and also the torque curve, which is a bit of a downer. But then again, the amount of power that this thing has, it's not going to be something that will make you feel underpowered, sluggish in any way. In fact, with the increased capacity and better power to weight, the bike feels quicker when you whack the throttle open. And Tram confirms that the 900 is indeed quicker to the ton by almost a second. You see, one of the most likeable things about the Tiger, especially the road-going model, has been its feel. It feels like a street naked, a fast street naked. And that's what many people have come to love about the bike, about its chassis, about its engine. And the good news is, all of that continues to stay true and even better, gets better in fact, with the GT Pro. Now the engine, it's still got a very strong uh, top end, it's still got a very strong top end pull, a top end shove. If you were to tour around the world and even chance yourself upon a road like the Autobahn with no speed limits, 200 kilometers an hour is not going to be a problem at all. In fact, even the chassis feels very stable at that speed. The tires feel like they're holding their own very nicely. The brakes feel quite good even at that speed. So all of that is good news. What's even better is going with its street naked or fast street naked credentials is a quick shifter. A, a, twin, a two directional uh, quick shifter is what you get on this. Very similar to what you have on the Street Triple RS. And well, it works as impressively too. The gearing is set up such that while the second, third and fourth gears give you a strong acceleration in all load conditions, you can potter around town peacefully in fourth with speeds as low as 45 km an hour. Meanwhile, the fifth and the sixth gears will quickly settle at a low engine speed while cruising on the highway. The new assisted clutch, which is significantly lighter than before, makes it less cumbersome to use too. The ointment is that between the 4 to 8,000 RPM zone, the engine gets quite vibey. There's quite a bit of vibrations. You'll feel them in the pegs, you'll feel them in the handlebars. Now, it goes very nicely with the grunty nature of this engine. So, I'm not really complaining much if I was into sport touring, if I was into sport riding. All of that goes quite nicely, feels quite good, adds to the feel in fact. But then, if I'm putting 800, 900 kilometers a day in the saddle, well, by the end of the day, it might just feel a little irritating and that's the only gripe that I have with this new engine. Heavier bar ends could solve that vibration issue, but I wasn't too impressed with the windshield as I couldn't find a single position that would completely get rid of the buffeting beyond 130 km an hour. While its design is very similar to the outgoing unit, the mechanism now has a brace that seems to have eliminated the clunky sound of the outgoing windshield. Speaking of clunky sounds, our test bikes were not fitted with the main stand, so I can't confirm if that infamous clunk from the bottom of the bike has been eliminated or not. The suspension noise, however, is definitely gone, even on the Rally Pro. Well, a lot of you asked us, why is the electronic suspension adjustment only at the rear and not at the front? Well, the only simple answer to that is cost. They had to save costs. Putting an electronic suspension front and rear would have made an astronomical difference to the price and it wouldn't have kept it as accessible as the Tiger is known to be. So that is also one of the reasons why they've gone with a lesser known manufacturer as compared to a Showa or an Olin's or a Kayaba. This is called Marzoki. They are experts at suspension systems. They have built a perfectly nice setup for this bike as well and you'll have to ride it to believe it. But yes, there are a few things that you will have to spend a lot of time on. For example, you have preload settings that are controlled via the instrumentation. You also have damping control and I found for my weight, for my height, for my riding style, the damping setup to be very nicely uh, tuned at about level 6. Going anywhere closer to comfort, that is a lower level, was making it too squishy on the rear. Going anywhere towards sporty was making it nice and taut, but then the front wasn't coping up. Now, it's not a problem with the suspension or the design. It's just that I was unable to get my settings right. I would have to fiddle a lot more with it, see what my comfort zone is, see what kind of a setup I would want at the front. And once that is through, then I'm sure that it will handle the way I want it to. It will feel the way I want it to. So let that be something that you need to take note of as well. If you are getting one of these, you will have to train yourself on how to set up your suspension to your preference and then get it done accordingly so that you feel the right kind of weight balance, the right kind of nosedive and all of that and you get a good confidence-inspiring feel from the motorcycle. 
He rode from Marrakesh to Essaouira through some stunning mountain roads, B roads and the open highways, amounting to about 330 kilometers in a day. All day in the saddle is absolutely comfortable despite the narrower seat. From the saddle, the display looks crisp and easy to read at all times. And since the screen is bonded closer to the glass now, it has lesser reflections too. Out of the four layout styles, style number four worked best for me. But I wish that the ref counter was easier to read and that there was an option of displaying minimal data than what it currently displays. The rider triangle is also fairly relaxed, but with the relatively sharp handling dynamics of this new motorcycle, scraping the pegs is far too easy. The GT Pro ships with Medzilla Touran's next tyres, which were squirming a bit at higher lean angles, but knowing how capable they are, I believe that it is down to the suspension which wasn't set to my preference. While the bike feels light on its feet while munching miles, around the twisties, it can still feel quite a handful to pick up and throw around. For some riders, that could seem like a bit of work and may not be as effortless as some of the competition. But overall, the GT Pro is a very enjoyable machine like its predecessor and all the enhancements make it a more comfortable sports tourer than before. But whether or not you take a liking to its new sound and the new engine character is something that will heavily influence what kind of feel and how much involvement you get from this motorcycle. So do take a long test ride before you commit to the money. The inherent character of the new Tiger 900 suits the rally more than the GT. From the way it looks in Triumph's Tramontana Rally Raid project-inspired livery to the way it stands on that long travel suspension and those tall wheels, the Rally Pro exudes the confidence and the off-road ability of this new platform. So like I said, these are two completely different motorcycles, the Rally Pro and the GT Pro. And the Rally Pro also looks quite different. It's not just the tall stance, it's also the new suspension that you see up front with the Showa branding on it. Looks quite nice. You also see those tubeless wheels. Uh, the spokes are laced to the outer side of the rim. So those are now tubeless wheels. So finally, you have wire spoke wheels with tubeless tyres on there. And also these panels that you see here, they're plastic on the GT Pro, but metal on the Rally because it's going to be dropped quite often. And believe me, this is the better colour to choose if you're going to drop the bike because once you start getting scratches and dents on the paintwork, it reveals the white primer and that sort of goes with this green and white theme. What you see here, uh, the additional accessories like the, the tank guard, the sum guard, all of that is fitted standard on the Rally Pro. So think of this as something like what you had with the XCA. You had the XCX and then you had the XCA which was the accessorized version. So it's drawing a page out of that book. It has a few accessories that come standard with the Rally Pro. Even the uh, auxiliary lights are included in that. I would of course add a lot more protection to the motorcycle if I was uh, hardcore about taking it uh, to the uh, trails and all of that. But yes, this is what it looks like and I think it is the best looking motorcycle in the Tiger lineup right now. Well, since you asked, no, the new tubeless wheels can't be retrofitted on the 800 because the PCD is different. Neither are they recommended on the GT unless you're ready to swap the suspension too to accommodate the 21-inch wheel size. Compared to the GT, the handlebar on the Rally Pro is 5mm wider, the foot pegs are set rearward and the rear brake lever is off-road friendly too. With its bear trap design, a relatively higher position for ease while standing up and riding and a folding design to avoid bending or breakage in case of a fall. On the highway though, you will have to get used to that brake lever's position. Even the LED turn blinkers up front have learned from the 800 and are now set higher and out of harm's way when the bike takes a fall. But the high mounting of the rear turn blinkers is a concern for those who carry wide aftermarket tail bags that droop on their sides. The new design of the radiators will also necessitate protection frames and thankfully Triumph has one available in the accessories that will also cover the tank. Like I mentioned right at the beginning of this review, when it comes to a Tiger, it is about knowing what you want and knowing what you need. So please do not make a decision based on pricing or the seat height. Do take a test ride of both the motorcycles extensively before you decide what you want. Now the engine, that's another question we started off with. Does it feel like two different engines in one? Well, the short answer to that is yes, it does feel like two different engines in one. That low end shove that this engine now offers is phenomenal. Way better than what we had with the Tiger 800. Whether it's riding up trails, going up tricky terrain, powering yourself out of deep sand, it will do all of that the way the Tiger 800 couldn't. And that is something that I really like. What I like more is that low end shove and the way it's tuned and the way the throttle response is, there's a much stronger connection now between you, the power and the road, or even 
the lack of it and that is something that i missed on the tiger 800 and that's something that the rally pro offers to the fullest extent and that is what i love about this particular variant what i also love about the rally pro is the kind of front end feel that it now offers compared to the xcx there's a lot more planted feel that you get from the front end even the new steering geometry makes it feel more grounded makes it feel more agile at the same time and that's a very good thing it makes you feel more confident as compared to the xcx even in terms of the electronics now we've been riding in the off-road pro mode none of us are pros here and still we've been riding in off-road pro mode all along and well the electronics they aren't there in the off-road pro mode you don't get the abs you don't get the traction control and yet the bike is so much more manageable the way i would like to put it is most of the hairy incidents that i've had on other big advs those similar kind of incidents on this bike those similar kind of scenarios or terrains on this particular bike make you laugh out loud inside the helmet that's the kind of fun it offers we raided a beach raced through some fields and crossed some slushy stuff too i even dropped the bike while having all this fun and picking up this new tiger is now much easier. This is me pulling it off in slush. The Brembo Style MR brakes are one of the best in the business. And while they are sports bike level of sharp on the GT Pro, on the Rally Pro, they bite less aggressively when you engage the off-road mode. But I have a bit of a gripe with the mode selection. Even with the new advanced IMU that enables cornering ABS and a new less intrusive and very dependable traction control system, Switching between the road and off-road modes still needs you to come to a complete halt. Furthermore, the tyre pressure monitoring system which is standard on the Pro models will fill up the screen with a large unavoidable warning when you drop the pressures for road use. But who's looking at the screen anyway when you're off-roading? The new Showa suspension is the star of these enhanced off-road abilities of the bike. While the WP on the XC is an excellent setup in itself, the Showa setup pushes the envelope further. Even though I don't possess the skills of a rally rider or a seasoned off-road enthusiast at that, the difference in the suspension behaviour isn't hard to notice. Compared to the single tension springs on the GT's Marzocchi forks, the Showas have dual rate springs in the forks. While many hope for progressive springs, which could still be doable on your own, this setup will work extremely well for most riders and enthusiasts. Integrating an electronic suspension of similar abilities would have significantly escalated the costs, says Triumph. But having it at least as an option, like on the new Africa Twin, would have been the right move in my books. In fact, a battle between the new Africa Twin 1100, the 790 Adventure and the new Tiger 900 is going to be a very interesting one. But that is a story for another day, which shouldn't be too far from now is what I believe. But as for the Tiger 900s, these new models are a major step up for Triumph and build further on the attributes of their predecessors, making them one of the best propositions in the middleweight ADV category. How do these two bikes feel on each other's terrain? Well, beginning with the GT Pro, uh, it is great on the road like we already showed you and spoke about, but off the road, it's not all that bad. As long as your off-road or your definition of off-road is mile trails, gravelly paths and all of that, it'll take on all of that quite well. So poor roads shouldn't be a problem. Bad roads like the ones in India on your tours shouldn't be a problem at all. But you try and bring up the difficulty level. You give it stuff like rocky terrain, slush, all of that, and then it will start breaking a sweat. Now moving on to the rally. Well, this is great off the road, but on the road, it's actually quite good. And with these road tires, it has absolutely no problem keeping up with the GT Pro when you hit the twisties, when you hit the fast highways, all of that because it's the same engine, it's the same chassis. Even with its taller ride head and all of that, it keeps up quite well. Of course, it doesn't feel as sharp at turn-ins as this bike. The brakes aren't as aggressive as this bike because that is how it has been tuned on this particular motorcycle. But then it will never lose sight of this motorcycle if you were riding on a fast winding road. And that's the beauty of it. So in that sense, this is the more go anywhere motorcycle. So if I was buying one, this would clear, clearly be the bike that I would buy. If I was recommending one, well, it clearly is the Rally Pro that I would recommend to anyone because in that sense, it is more foolproof, it is more future-proof as compared to what the GT does. Now the other big question, if you already have a Tiger 800, should you upgrade to the Tiger 900? Let's begin with the GT again. Now if you already have the XR or the XRX, then well, maybe no. Yes, it has a fancier a dash, it's got the electronic suspension, it's got a better suspension setup overall. But I believe that's not reason enough 
for you to go ahead and upgrade because the overall experience of riding this motorcycle versus the Tiger 800 XR or XRX is going to be still very similar. And the amount of money that you would pay upgrading is not really going to justify that, at least in my books. Whether it does that or not for you is something that you can decide. But moving on to the off-road variant. Again, if you have the XE or the XEX, the Rally Pro enhances everything that you love about your bike already. Some things that you probably don't like about your bike already, it fixes that. As an upgrade, I don't know because the, the level of experience that it offers, it's certainly a lot more fun. But should you upgrade, should you pay that kind of money to get one of these is something that only you can decide. I will not say yes or a no because I can't put my mind to it and decide whether it's a worthy upgrade or not. But if you have a road going version like an XR or an XRX and like many other Tiger owners out there, including myself, if you realize that you've made the wrong decision, you wanted something that was more off-road friendly as well, then yes, this is the one you want to go with. This is what you want to upgrade because it is a completely different package. The sum of all the enhancements that it brings to the table over the bike that you already have clearly justifies the price, clearly justifies the upgrade. So if you've been waiting for this, I think it's time to head to the Triumph dealership already. Mm.